Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and welcome to a brand new program called Daily Faith. I want to partner with you in believing God for your unsaved loved ones. If Jesus were to come tonight, how would you spend the rest of this day? I think I know. You'd be telling your loved ones and asking them, are they ready to meet the Lord Jesus? And I'm going to help you see household salvation come to your family. It's time for household salvation. And this is Daily Faith. The Bible says in Acts 16, 31, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. If you ask most Christians, that's what they'll say to you. You shall be saved. And if you ask them, has that contract or that covenant worked for you? They're going to say, oh yes, I'm saved. I gave my heart to Jesus and, and I'm saved. But there's a whole part of that scripture that's missed so many times. I call it the unclaimed promise of God. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved and your household, your house, your family. Now, I'm Scottish. If you're wondering where my accent is from, I'm a Scotsman. My name is Cameron. I'm from the clan Cameron. We have our own tartans. And uh, maybe one day I'll wear my kilt to sh just to prove that to you. But in Scotland, many years ago, when clans were like tribes, when you wore your tartan your, or your colors, you call it plaid, we call it tartan, you were identified or your house was identified by the colors you wore. So you could look across the, the, the glen or the valley and see someone walking and by whatever tartan he was wearing, you knew what house he belonged to and you knew whether he was a friend or a foe. So your house, the scriptural reference to your house is not where you're staying. Your house is your family. And uh, in our family, the clan Cameron, if you're a Kennedy, you're part of the clan Cameron. They call it Sept's, S-E-P-T. So the Kennedy clan and the Taylor clan, just to mention one of many, many, are called Sept's of the Cameron Tartan or the Cameron clan. So someone from a small tribe would wear the, 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 the big family's name or, 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 or Tartan so they'd be identified as part of the House of Cameron. So that's why the Queen is of the House of Windsor. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's the amalgamation of all your family and friends and influence. Now look at that scripture again. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, and your house. Everybody that is attached to you, whether it's by family or by friendship, you have the right according to this covenant. You see, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. If you look at it, it should be if you believe or when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. So there's a condition. The believing is the condition. And the reward, the benefit, is you shall be saved. It's like when you pay your money, you buy your house or your car. The conditional transaction of a covenant. So what God is saying is, if you believe in me, you shall be saved and your family. No, I just know watching me right now there are people that you tuned into this program, your TV may have been left on. I don't know how you got to sit there in front of me right now. But I know this. It is under the divine plan and will of God that we are going to go on an expedition. We are going to go on an adventure of faith to believe God for every single one of your family to get saved. You say, you, you're saying, Philip, can this really work for me? Can this, can this happen in my home? Let me tell you with me. Every man in my family for 200 years were alcoholics. Every one of them. Our whole town hated the Camerons because of our drunken ways. My grandfather was the guy you met or you saw lying on the gutter on, on the way to work on Monday. Every, he was a businessman, and every time he got money, 
he blew the whole thing on alcohol. One day my, my grandma caught him climbing out of the bedroom with a brand new suit he'd bought for a wedding and he was so desperate for alcohol. There was a guy waiting along the, on, the, on the shore. We come from a fishing, a fishing town and this guy was waiting to buy his suit. And he, and he was like that for 60 years. He was 60 years of age. Come out of the First World War wounded and had lived through the Battle of the Somme. And if you know history, that was one of the darkest days. 82,000 men, casualties in one day, in that one battle. And my grandfather lived through that battle. And they gave the, the troops rum, false courage, to go over the trenches in France. And our family had been locked in horrendous darkness to the curse of alcohol eating us alive. And one of my uncles, my dad's oldest brother, Michael, was up in the north of Scotland breaking an American, this is in the Second World War now, and, and, and this American boat had been torpedoed by the Nazis. And the American captain, very brave, had beached this boat on the rocks to save the cargo and, and the metal of the ship. And my uncle Michael was part of a team that went up to break this ship down and take the very precious metal and put it on trains, send it back to England to the munitions factory where they would recycle the metal into other things. He was 21 years of age, an alcoholic. Had never been in church, never heard the gospel, never seen a Bible, nothing. No contact with the, the, the gospel or Jesus. He came across from this little island called Stroma. Google it if you want. S-T-R-O-M-A, Stroma. S-T-R-O-M-A, Stroma. And he came across to the mainland, and there's a wee tea room where a bus would come and take you to the main town where there was a bar. And he was sitting in this tea room waiting for the bus to come. And between the salt and pepper shaker, there was a piece of paper. And he picked it up, and he began to read it just to fill time while his tea came. And as he picked up this piece of paper, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And instantly, in a moment, the Holy Ghost came upon a drunken young boy in a tea room in the north of Scotland. And the waitress came with his tea. It was her gospel tract. And she said, son, are you saved? He didn't know what saved meant, apart from falling off a ship and being saved. And he looked up and he says, I, I'm, I'm saved, I'm saved. He says, what's this? She says, well, that's the Bible, son. That's one verse out of a book that God wrote for mankind. He says, where can I get these books from? And the, the waitress says, well, if you go up to the, to the book room up in Wick, which is the main town, uh, there's a book room and you can get up, ask for a Bible. And my uncle went on the bus, went up to Wick, walked into the book room and put all his wages on the table. And he says, I want to buy as many Bibles as my money will buy. And he picked them all up and took them in his arms and went back on a bus, back to where the, the, the rowing boat took him across to the island. And he walked around every house in that island saying, I've met a man called Jesus over there. He came home to our home in Scotland and told our family, we don't have to live like this. There's a better way of life. Seven years he prayed. Two young preachers came to our town at the end of the seven years. They couldn't find a place to preach. And a guy opened his house up and emptied his bedroom and a few chairs were put in there. Herbert Harrison and Donald Walker were the two men. And they had services there for six weeks. And they had 96 converts in that little room in six weeks. 67 of them were Camerons. God broke into our family and set us free. 67 of us. What would you do in the next six weeks if God invaded your family for household salvation? Well, that's what this program is about. I am going to believe God with you. That the same God that saved us is going to reach into your son's life and your daughter's life. That our addresses will be coming up on the screen. If you want to write us the old-fashioned way, I, I prefer getting a letter and holding it in my hand. Maybe I'm old-fashioned. But there's a P.O. box. You'll find it at the end of the program. There is a website, philipdcameron.com, and you can contact me there. There's also a phone number. 
I want to become a partner with you to believe God for a household salvation. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a statement of faith. And I know you've been looking for an answer. You've got problems in your home you don't know what to do with. There's just nothing but a mess everywhere. Well, God has arranged you and I to meet for the purpose of bringing the prodigals out of the pig pen into the household of faith. This is a divine appointment. I know it is. And you and I are going to see miracles happen in the weeks and months. Tell your friends about daily faith. Tell your friends that you know folk that are believing God for household salvation. Send me the names of your loved ones. I want to hold them in my hand and believe God with you for great things. Watch this. We'll be back in a moment. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Cameron. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. This book can change the direction of your family, I promise you. It's the story, a much expanded story of what I've just told you. I just told you how the first camera got saved. Wait until you how my mom got saved. And my dad, how he abused my mom for seven more years as she prayed for him to get saved. I'm telling you now, this book will make you laugh and cry. In fact, someone called me yesterday, a man called Bill, and I'm from Albuquerque, New Mexico. He says, I've read your book. He says, but it's taken me a long time because I read a page and I put the book down and I weep and weep and I pick it back up again and I weep. This book is a, is a map on how to get your family out of darkness. It will change how you think about the loved ones in your life. And if you can help us with a gift of $30 to help just our ministry, we've got so much things that we want to do for the kingdom of God. And your gift really makes an, uh, an incredible difference. Let me encourage you again. I want you to write me with your loved ones, your names, first names, John, Susan, whatever it is, and let me hold them in my hand. Apart from what we do for household salvation, we as a family are committed to missions. We have discovered young boys and young girls that have no mom and dad to pray for them, that sit in darkness and hopelessness and despair in a communist country in Eastern Europe called Moldova. This video will help you understand the passion of our hearts, and that is to see orphans be turned from, son, from orphans into sons and daughters, and sons and daughters into missionaries. And that is exactly what we are seeing happening. These kids that have been told all their lives, you're nothing, you'll never be anything, you're a waste of time. These kids are turning into missionaries and are winning the orphans from the very orphanages they came from. We are saving them from trafficking. Huge problem, 400,000 young girls from Moldova have been trafficked. And they come to us instead of going to the trafficker and they learn about Jesus and grace and mercy. And it is miraculous to watch what's happening. So I want you to watch this video and we'll be back in a moment. Moldova is the poorest country in all of Europe. If you leave two miles out of the city, there are no streets, no sidewalks. There's grinding, soul-destroying poverty. And this compression of poverty breaks spirits and hearts. 
When a family breaks, usually a parent will go abroad for a job and leave the kids behind with all kinds of promises. And they just don't come back. That causes orphans, abandoned kids. And those kids are warehoused in orphanages. No one cares about them. They're told things every day like, nothing plus nothing will always be nothing. Your mother doesn't want you. Your father didn't want you. We don't want you. Every piece of paper they have is stamped orphan. A stigma that goes with them through all their life. The only way for me to survive, it was to put me in a hospital for children which are sick with tuberculosis. And um, I stayed there for 10 years. So I wasn't sick, I was a normal child. I didn't have any problems with my health. But it was the only place that could receive these little babies like me. For 10 years, I didn't know that I have a family. And I didn't even know my real name. I have little to say about my life. When it comes to family, I can say that I never had one. My mother died when I was 12 years old. My father left when I was little, so I don't even remember what he looks like. Little by little, I began losing myself. Me and my sister spent the next six years being moved from centers to sanatoriums and so on. Because of the poor economic situation in Moldova, my father was forced to spend most of his time working abroad in order to provide for the family. I would sit by the window and watch my siblings walking home from school with badly worn shoes and clothes that barely fit them. I couldn't understand why my family was going through such a hard times. And I thought that God forgot about us. I lived with my parents and my sister until one day my mother left us. Because my father was disabled and he couldn't take care of us, he put us in a orphanage, in the largest orphanage in Moldova. In the orphanage, it was horrible because teachers said to us every day that we are nothing and nobody loved us, nobody cared about, about us and they knew about it. And And they did a lot of horrible things to us. At 16, they graduate. They age out of the orphanage. Given a few dollars and a bus ticket to whatever name of town is on their birth certificate. And they're sent away. Many end up in a bus station. And a car drives up. And a man steps out and says, looking for a place to go, looking for a job. I have an uncle in Italy, and we're looking for waitresses. We'll pay your ticket there. We'll help you get there. And a wee girl that has no experience, painfully naive, gets in the back of a car. Within 24 hours of getting in that car, she is taken away and raped and beaten mercilessly. They use them 30 to 50 times a day until there's nothing left. The orphan's hands has managed to break that cycle. They come to us with the clothes on their back. Many have never had any dreams of going to school or any hope of living a normal life, marked forever because they're an orphan. And we take them in and we give them their own bed and their own clothes. We enroll them in a good school and suddenly despair begins to turn to hope. Because of the orphan's hands, things are different this year. My siblings have received clothes, shoes, food. Now I know that all of those hard winter times we had 
to endure that are over. Don't ever believe that God has forsaken you, no matter what you're going through. My hope for the future is to build a different life for myself and for my children. So they won't have to go through the things I went through in my life. I am who I am today because of Jesus. God had a plan all along. He changed my life through the Cameron family. He showed me that there's somebody who loves me and somebody who cares about me. After I finished the orphanage, uh, I didn't know where to go. After a few months, I met the, family, uh, the Cameron family and um, they changed my life. I'm very thankful that uh, God found me. Though I didn't know my real name when I was in the hospital, um, my God chose me and knew before I was born and he had a plan with me before I was born. And thank you for being a part of my life because of you, now I have this opportunity to speak for those that are still in these difficult periods like I, am, I was. And because of you, now I have a voice to speak about those that are lost now. You have incredible power right now. You have the power of life and death in the yes of your heart, in the stretch of your hand, to allow a young girl who tonight is absolutely lost, who today sits with no hope, to lift them out of darkness and say to them, we love you and we care for you because God does. And we will stand with you through the storm until the new day comes. The story of grace and redemption. I'm believing God for your family to get saved. I'm asking you, will you believe God for these who are God's children? The Bible says he's the fatherless, the father of the fatherless. And how you treat the orphan turns God's heart towards your family. You can help us right now. We're building homes as I speak. We're looking for people that will be joined with us and become a, a sponsor, part of our Orphan's Hands family by giving a dollar a day. A dollar a day won't change your life financially. It will bring blessing into your life. But a dollar a day will allow us to keep the doors open of our homes, keep these kids going to school, pay bus tickets. We, I think we spent over $2,000 a month just on bus tickets, sending to the schools they go to all across the city of Kishnau. Our kids are, come to us with no hope, and we try to talk faith, and we, and we say, listen, God's got a plan, and we put them back into school. Sometimes they haven't even bothered trying to learn because an orphan, there's no reason or point. Some of our kids today are studying to be doctors and lawyers with no hope, no hope. God has done something spectacular. So I'm asking you to pray right now. Can you help us sponsor the orphan's hands? Can you help us sponsor the kids you're watching right now on that video and say, I can help Philip. A dollar a day will not affect me greatly in my finances. But I do know this, a dollar a day can save a life in Moldova. Can I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, I know there's been a connection made between us and a friend watching right now. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will speak to every heart watching, that a yes will come in their heart, and they will say, we will be a part of this miracle of reaching those that have no one to pray for them as a seed for a mighty harvest in our lives. You can do this. You can go to the phone and dial 833 Daily Faith and just tell the person that picks up and just say, listen, I'm, I'm watching Philip and I want to sponsor the kids in Moldova by giving a dollar a day. If you can't give a dollar a day, 
whatever you can give, whether it's $10 or $1,000. We're believing God right now for 140000 to finish a whole village I'll tell you about in later weeks. But I just can't express enough to you how important you are to what we do. We can reach as far as you allow us to. We have faith in God to do everything and reach everybody. But we just need other folk to hold the other side of the rope and say, we're with you, Philip. We'll stand with you. And your gift of a dollar a day will change a life so drastically for the kingdom of God. God bless you. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their Heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124. Daily Faith with Philip Cameron, The Orphan's Hands, reserves the right to direct allocated funds to the greatest need.